Welcome to School Matters. I'm Joni Kopis, and today with us we have three new elementary principals for this school year. We want to introduce you to them and get to learn a little bit more about them. So briefly, just give me your name and what school. Vicki, we'll start with you. I'm Vicki Kowak, and I'm principal at Bridgeport Elementary. I'm Jamie Koontz. I'm the principal at Fairwood Elementary. Katie Hubert, the principal at Linden Elementary. Well, welcome. I know you guys are a little nervous, but it'll be easy. First, let's learn a little bit about each of you. We'll start with you, Katie, because you truly are new to the district this year. So give us a little feedback uh, on your hiring process, the interview, what was first impressions of our district? Well, first, I've been in education for 15 years. Um, I've worked in um, Hamilton, Butler, and Warren County mm -hmm. at this point. Um, the interview process to me was uh, one of uh, being quite unique. Mm -hmm. um, I had the opportunity to meet with the same team over and over and over again, which so it was um, a group interview. It was correct? a group interview, uh -huh. and and it was the same group every time you were called back. So you were building relationships right off the bat. Um, I loved the idea that um, it was familiar faces, and it was just kind of getting more and more and more in depth. Mm -hmm. if, if I was the right person for the job, and if this district was the right place for me to be, mm -hmm. and um, since I've taken the position, those relationships have continued to grow and. And um, everyone has always been there just to help and hey what can I do to help you be successful in the position so it's been a, um, a very unique and um, I don't know um, I don't know informative pos uh, opportunity for me to take well welcome to the district well, thank you. You. and Jamie we said you're the new principal of Fairwood yes. but you're not new to Fairwood so give us a little bit of background about you um, I've actually been with Hamilton for nine years now mm -hmm. I started my career as a seventh and eighth grade language arts teacher at Garfield right across and the street in that experience, I was able to have so many wonderful opportunities and leadership, mm -hmm. and so I did go over to Fairwood for two years as a teacher on special assignment, which mm -hmm. is sort of like the dean's role now. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was back at Garfield as an assistant principal last year, and fortunately for me, I was brought back to Fairwood this year as the building principal. So you're very familiar with the, the community, you know, being right across the street, Garfield yes. and Fairwood. So my entire career has been sent been spent on the east side of Hamilton, um, right on Fair Avenue. Good for you. And then Vicki, I know you've been in the district for a while, but you sort of started your educational career a little later in life. Explain that. Yes, I started later in life. This is a second career for me. Um, I stayed home and raised my two boys, Scott and Bennett, um, and they went through the Hamilton schools. And when they were at Hamilton High, being recruited for college through the football program, um, I decided to go back to grad school. And Education has always been a passion for me, so here I am. I was a teacher at Lincoln for eight years, and now I am a principal at Bridgeport after being a teacher on special assignment for two years at Ridgeway and one year at Bridgeport. Well, great. Well, good. Well, we're glad you guys are here. And as you said, Katie, there was a long interview process mm -hmm. because, as we mentioned before, there's 23 new or reassigned administrators in a school district a year, so that's about almost half, and that's that's a lot of a lot of change, a lot of transition, mm -hmm. a lot of opportunities, as we like to say. So, talk about changing. Education has changed so much, not only at the state or the national level, but let's talk a little bit about that, Jamie. About I guess the biggest change is both the principal and teacher evaluation. So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, the new evaluation model that's coming out, um, because our district is raised to the top, we're actually going to start with the new model next year mm -hmm. for every staff member. Mm -hmm. um, so the new Ohio teacher evaluation system is really interesting because it takes um, education back to what it should be. Mm -hmm. It's all about individual students meeting individual student needs, and it's really encouraging administration to get into the classrooms and work with teachers. So, mm -hmm. and like this year, I, th I think we observe teachers on three separate occasions. Mm -hmm. Well, um, you know, our list is about seven or eight teachers, whereas next year we'll be evaluating every teacher on staff. And we will be in each classroom with formal observations at least twice a year. Because it used to be like, a third of your of your staff you would evaluate every year. Is mm -hmm. that right, Vicki? Now it's yes. every teacher and, every year. And really the beauty of this model is this rubric is it's very specific. So um, staff and teachers can decide where their goals lie and where they'd like to to improve their practice. Mm -hmm. um, we have such a focus on personalized learning for students, uh, meeting the needs of each individual student through either interventions or enrichments. Mm -hmm. And this evaluation process lends itself to differentiating instruction and um, teachers really being able to self-reflect on their practice. 
So it's, it's good, and then it obviously you have room for improvement, mm -hmm. areas of improvement, what have you. But it is a lot of paperwork, right, Katie? I mean, there's, you, there's going to be a lot of paperwork for every for every teacher um, right? in the building needing to to get that. But I think the beauty of this model it allows you to become the coach. It allows mm -hmm. the administrator to be the coach, and I think that's a big part when you're off pulled off to the side when you have those rich dialogues after the observation to come back in and to go off of what Vicky was saying. When you have the rubric right in front of you, it allows subjectiveness to be put aside and really you get down to the facts of what, what happened in, the, in that observation. And I know you've all been in uh, Superintendent Mrs. Baker's office because you have a principal evaluation so it complements the, the teacher evaluation. Yes. Mm -hmm. It does. It, it, it kind of all kind of lays hand in hand mm -hmm. and um, and what is nice is that we've gone through that process yeah. collectively we all survived. <laughs> and we all survived <laughs> right. and so you know I think we can offer that back to the teachers and mm -hmm. the staff you know kind of where the strengths were for us and mm -hmm. what we did to hey we need to share this idea with you or to you know maybe be a little bit more forward thinking and thinking ahead. And if they're nervous they want you they can appreciate well you know you've been through right. it too mm -hmm. so we're all in this together if you will. Okay. Well and there's no guessing it's mm -hmm. all comes down to evidence mm -hmm. so either you're doing doing your job or you're not. Right. Um, so so it's, it's really interesting to see because there's it's no guessing. Yeah. Well, you mentioned evidence. Let's talk about the third grade guarantee. I mean, that's a, that's a buzzword out there. Yep. Explain a little bit about that and how that works. We'll start with you, Jamie. Um, with the third grade guarantee, with the new passing of House Bill 316, we're talking about all students in third grade meeting minimum proficiency requirements and uh, being literate when they leave third grade. Mm -hmm. So for next year, Basically, the cutoff is a 390 score. Any student who does not reach a 390 score on their spring OAA will be retained in third grade because uh, they're not meeting those proficiency requirements. And that that has a big impact on staffing. You know, depending on how many you may have to retain, how does that third grade? You know, what your third grade classrooms look like? Mm -hmm. Does that mean you have less students in fourth grade? So, very anxious, I guess, in finding out all the test results. But I think the idea is, is again, tying back to personalized learning, the idea is to um, detect diagnose, diagnosis, if you would, mm -hmm. of uh, students reading deficiencies and provide those at early interventions. Mm -hmm. um, I know the district has a focus on grades K through 2 for improving literacy skills. Um, we have after school reading intervention. Mm -hmm. um, and we have, we'll be having summer school grades mm -hmm. K through 6. Right. Um, but our teachers are really focused on meeting the needs of the students as they go along. For example, um, they'll be doing uh, what we call Dibbles testing periodically to progress monitor where the students are. And you pinpoint their, where they need extra help. And, um, so you in look the at Jamie and say she really needs some, some help in mm -hmm. this particular mm -hmm. area and, and give her and, that extra. And make sure the students receive that extra help through our volunteers mm -hmm. or um, through our Title I or our special education department. Well, it's important to note too that I don't think any of us want to retain any third grader right. based upon mm -hmm. one test score. Right. So we are doing everything we can for every third grader and, mm -hmm. and every student K to two preparing for this third grade test right. to make sure that students really are ready when mm -hmm. they get into right. the intermediate curriculum. Mm -hmm. And, Kat, and Vicki mentioned after school intervention for math and reading, but we also have after school enrichment for our gifted right. students. So explain mm -hmm. a little bit about that, how that's going. Um, the enrichment program is held one day after school week and it is scheduled for students who want that extra push and we're focusing on technology and everything kind of going through that vein but it's that same thing that you're hearing over and over again in this conversation where it is a year's growth in a year's time for mm -hmm. students and keeping everybody engaged and students being met at their level regardless of what that level is and, and, and being exposed and having the opportunity to maximize their learning potential within a given year. Mm -hmm. Good. And that's at all all eight elementary mm -hmm. schools yes, have yes. after the school inter intervention and enrichment. Yes. Exactly. Right. And then you mentioned too technology with the state testing coming on in a couple years where everything's online testing, technology is more critical than, than ever. Yeah. It is. We're moving away from the standard paper pencil test. Mm -hmm. The and, number two pencil. Right. <laughs> and so uh, we are implementing a new testing protocol through PARC mm -hmm. um, and that will start in the 2014-15 school year where our assessments are all going to be online. Mm -hmm. um, I know that Garfield piloted an online test last year in social studies and it was really neat because mm -hmm. the kids are so engaged in technology mm -hmm. that I think that with this new form of testing it may inadvertently give us a little bit of an advantage mm -hmm. because our students are tech technology savvy across mm -hmm. the board oh, yeah. and so if they're engaged with the technology they may be more engaged with the test. I always right. tell Fingers everybody crossed. if you're struggling with your cell phone or any type of technology 
ask you know mm -hmm. someone under 10, they'll, they'll be able to fix it for <laughs> you. <laughs> well, through our Title I funding, each mm -hmm. school is going to be receiving 350 new Chromebooks, mm -hmm. um, grades 2 through 6, and our K um, and 1 students are going to be receiving iPads, 30 per grade level. Mm -hmm. um, this is through grant writing, Title I funds, and the idea is that they will have access to learning at all points of the day um, with our new Common Core standards. They will need to be able to research on the spot mm -hmm. to facilitate their learning and there are so many apps and, and things on the iPads that will engage the younger students and meet their learning needs. For example, one student may work on phonics skills or another student may work on reading skills but they'll all be in the same room using mm -hmm. their individual iPads. Oh, that's, that's very good and I know um, there's, you see articles in the paper, you know, other districts struggle as, as everybody would. I mean that's a, that's a high ticket item technology mm -hmm. can be and so um, I say kudos for our district for really realizing that's, that's where it's going. You want to make sure the students feel comfortable using the technology before they're actually tested mm -hmm. on that, yeah. on online testing. Yeah, by surely having that number of resources in the mm -hmm. building, mm -hmm. that it really allows for authentic learning to mm -hmm. happen and to be able to pick up the iPad or pick up, you know, the Chromebook and open it up and, and have that moment of research. Mm -hmm. And um, the other thing, research so supports that. Mm -hmm. that right. You know, right. And then, you know, there's a saying, it takes a village to raise a child. And we were talking before how important it is that we have partnerships with so many different organizations and community agencies and what have you. I mean, you still have the bookmobiles come to the schools, mm -hmm. right, from the Lane mm -hmm. Library. We do. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the kids, I know that's always a, a big, big day when they get to go to the Lane Library bookmobile. And what's interesting about Lane Library, they have programs such as Ohio Info, and they'll come in and, and into our computer labs, with, which Bridgeport has three, and I'm sure mm -hmm. each of us mm -hmm. all have three we computer all labs for all grade levels. And they'll come in and teach programs for example, how to research for the science fair. Mm -hmm. So our sixth graders have really incorporated technology in their science fair research. Yeah, that's right, and that's coming up mm -hmm. soon too, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then also the YMCA, they provide um, before and after school daycare. Mm -hmm. I think okay. five out of our eight buildings, so that's that's a nice partnership as well. Yeah, I have that in my building and mm -hmm. it is. It's very nice and, and it's nice for the families, it's right. nice for the teachers, it's nice for the community to offer that kind of support to them. And then it's children. right after school, right at the school, so they can do their homework, they have some snacks, playtime. I think they're there till like six every night, mm -hmm. is that six right? Yeah. So parents come, you know, after work or whatever. So again, that's a nice a nice partnership that we have with the Y. Um, let's talk about adoptive school partners. We have a very strong adoptive school program. All the buildings have partners. Um, how, how valuable are they in your building? Well, for us, they're amazing. Um, they donate funds mm -hmm. to our, our students. Um, we've been saving our funds um, currently. Our students, fifth and sixth grade students, are write, writing a, a a proposal for our adopt -a school partners because they would like to purchase publishing. They want to publish an online newspaper oh, wow. that they would tie into their their mm -hmm. classroom time writing and learning. Um, also, they provide volunteers. They come in and, and tutor our students on a regular basis, help them with reading, or just to build those relationships with our students. And it links the community to. Um, the links community to our student learning. Well, we talked about the science fair. I know a lot of times you use the adoptive school partners oh, yeah. as judges. Mm -hmm. So that's always good yeah. too. Jamie, let's talk a little bit about your partners. Oh, my partners are just that. They're my partners. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel very fortunate that I've, in this new position, I've kind of inherited a great group to work with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we meet once a month. They partner with our students through business buddy letters. We have a pen pal program. And anytime that there's a need, they're very quick to just say, how can I help? Mm -hmm. And um, through our service learning initiatives across the district, I know that they took part in some of the empty bowls campaigns. Mm -hmm. um, they helped us fill that bus, fill that bus mm -hmm. with canned goods and, right. and anything that they can do to help. They're very eager to do so. So we're very lucky at Fairwood to have the partners that we do. And I guess the biggest partner would be, your, you know, the parent, the parent involvement, mm -hmm. you know, at all your schools. And talk about Linden's because I know they're very strong as well. Linden's, um, you know what, every, you need everybody. You're, you're mm -hmm. coming, it takes a village and mm -hmm. it does. And from your business partners that you have that, that show up and say, hey, I'm here to help you sling some cookie dough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. To the parents who are in your office all the time who are coming by, PTO moms saying, hey, I'm here for the pictures to help organize the pictures. Right. Or um, I'm here for PTO night. Or we're planning the father um, daughter dance. Right. I mean, it goes across the board in giving students not only that social event, but also those academic 
support mm -hmm. that they need. Yeah. So, and I think it's good for the for the students to see their parents, you know, be involved in school as well. Yeah. And Jamie, you've got yeah. a very strong volunteer group at Fairwood. Explain a little bit about that. Yes, um, we have lots of volunteers at Fairwood. Mm -hmm. So many that sometimes we lose track of everyone who's coming <laughs> in. But um, through different partnerships, I know that we are currently working with the Literacy House Tutors, which is neat because it is a program that was initiated by some retired teachers in the district. And they went through the Community Foundation and we now have 60 retired teachers doing level readers and um, the reading recovery system with our first and second graders so that's mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. um, we also work with the McKinney Vento grant at Fairwood and they offer support to our students who are in double up situations or maybe homeless right. um, and then you know Miami University tutors mm -hmm. through the America Reads mm -hmm. and America Counts program we have people in all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, other really exciting news is that we're partnering with Primary Health Solutions in the district and there's going to be a mobile dental lab mm -hmm. that's going to be visiting the buildings and, and we're very fortunate that they're going to start with us in, mm -hmm. at Fairwood. Yeah. And then also there's several of our schools, we have the homeschool liaisons that not only work with the students but more, more, more importantly their families and the various mm -hmm. social agencies that are involved. Explain a little bit about that. Um, we have Butler County Success in our building and they facilitate um, they have a backpack through Shared Harvest. The students mm -hmm. who are in need receive food every Friday to get them through the weekend. Um, they will pick parents up, take them to the doctor, bring them to meetings. Um, we also have a partnership with Cambridge School. Mm -hmm. um, we have a school-based therapist five days a week in our, our building, mm -hmm. which has been very helpful just for students who might need some strategies um, for social skills or for more important other health needs. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're very fortunate to have those kinds of services in our buildings. Very much so. And then I think one, one great service that we offer our students is um, all day, every day kindergarten. And we're like in our 15th year. No other school district in the county offers that. How important is it to have all day kindergarten? Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. That was from <laughs> With moving to the Common Core curriculum for next school year, it's, it's very important. Oh, what does that mean, Common Core? Um, the bit. state has adopted a new curriculum, um, and it's a Common Core, and I believe it's 44 states mm -hmm. now. Have the, 45. 45 states yes. um, have the Common Core curriculum where it's encouraging education to dig in deeper mm -hmm. to concepts and really en enrich those concepts that we've all worked on in the past. Um, so with the Common Core in kindergarten next year, it requires kindergartners to be able to write. It en encourages them to be able to research on the computer. Um, it's not enough. That's hard to fathom a five or six year old. I right. Mean, when I went to kindergarten, that's where we learned to read and write in our colors, mm -hmm. but they right. have to know all that before and they even walk they in. Think about literature. They have right. to make connections in, in informational texts and literary texts mm -hmm. um, and really look at illustrations and make those connections and be able to retell mm -hmm. stories, which that is rigorous for the end of kindergarten mm -hmm. to be able to do have those skills right. in place. Yes. So, you know, not only are they now just learning the letters and sounding out the words, but by the end of the year they're reading books, they're taking tests on the computer for accelerated reader. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's not enough just to come in with your colors and numbers anymore. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. have to dig a lot deeper. And Katie, not only, of course, important for the instruction, but I think just the so socialization of the five-year-olds, the kindergartners, you know, staying somewhere all day, you know, for six hours and <laughs> trying to behave. I mean, and getting it, them through the cafeteria line. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, those are some of the logistics. That's huge. Sure, that first week, you know, because they're, they're serving themselves. And, well, yeah. there's so many choices. It's, right. It's truly a cafeteria yeah. style. Yeah. And they're short, and so it's hard to see. To I mean, see over. It's a lot of that. You know, how to stay in line, mm -hmm. how to be quiet, you know, when they're used to how to play, being at their house. How to share. Right. Uh, yeah, there's a yeah. lot that goes Problem on. Problem solving, so right. You're looking at, not once again, over that academic piece, mm -hmm. which the Common Core is about being rigorous mm -hmm. and, you know, from the beginning it's talking about being career and college ready and right. it begins in kindergarten. Right. You know, kind of like you were saying, before, I used to learn my colors right. then, you know, we kind of, we still teach it, right. but we love it when you come in with that and mm -hmm. so that's what that full day kindergarten piece does. But that's that social piece as well mm -hmm. because a lot of those kindergartners to go a whole day don't have the stanima right. or don't have those social skill sets to do right. that. So mm -hmm. part of that is teaching and modeling that as well. Mm -hmm. So by the time they're first grade, they're seasoned and everything is easy. <laughs> no, we hope. We hope. <laughs> yeah, you hope, right? <laughs> That's the plan. Yeah, <laughs> but but all the changes and stuff, and, and we talked about you know both coming from the state, national level. It's it's a very time consuming. It can almost take the fun out of school. But really, you probably walk down the hall, and every day you probably have a funny story to share. There's always a funny story, and there's always a hug waiting for you. Mm -hmm. um, the students just are 
happy to be there. Our new schools, they, they're so mm. bright and airy. Mm -hmm. and, and I have to say the sixth graders did a, a lab where they tested the air quality in the schools using something very simple. I think they um, had Vaseline on cards. Oh, uh -huh. And don't you know, all the cards were clean uh -huh. after hanging up mm -hmm. for weeks. So we have those wonderful new environments. They come in happy. And for the most part, I think our students are very happy to, to be in school and learning. Um, it's it's a wonderful time in education. And you mentioned the new buildings. And of course, there, there's a lot, you know, six, 700 students were before when we had our 14 elementaries, they were anywhere from 250 to 600. So they are definitely larger buildings. But I think the beauty of the buildings are the pods. So you don't mm -hmm. have the kindergartners next door to a sixth grade classroom. Mm -hmm. You've got them all sort of segregated by, by age level, grade level. And I think that helps. So you break the big into small. Does that seem to be a fair statement? Yeah, I think our physical resources are used very skillfully mm -hmm. to enhance learning for everyone across the board. Mm -hmm. So the our buildings are beautiful and we're very fortunate to be there. Yeah. And again, mm -hmm. thanking for the community for allowing Absolutely. us to, to build that because I think it uh, brings pride not only to the students and the families, but I think the larger Hamilton community. So I think mm -hmm. communities should be very proud of what they were able to accomplish with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, in our character initiative, mm -hmm. not only winning the character, the 2012 character mm -hmm. award, um, one of the moms came to my office to tell me a funny story where her daughter, a lady had simply, they were in Kroger and the lady was pushing her basket and dropped her, her bag of chips. Mm -hmm. And the, the young student, she's only six years old, um, picked up the bag of chips and her mom, the lady said thank you and she turns to her mom and said, she, I'm being respectful and compassionate. Oh, very good. <laughs> Those are two best words. That's very good. See, yeah. even at six years of age, yeah. you're learning. So that's so, good. Good. Things we enforce every day. That's right. So mm -hmm. it's a lot of change, as we said, but it's a fun time in education. Um, people can get discouraged, but I think, again, listening to what we're doing and what we have in place, I think our district is way ahead of a lot of other districts that mm -hmm. you may talk to yeah. about mm -hmm. the common core and things coming down the pipeline. So I think we need to commend our, our staff because they're really working hard. And as you said, looking at each individual child and where their weaknesses are and where their strengths are and you know pushing on both ends. So I think that's that's very good. A lot of a lot of paperwork, a lot to do, but I think it'll be worth yeah. it in the end. Well. Yeah, and I, I think they're excited about the they change. Um, you know, we can't affect the changes that are coming from the state, but we can grab our surfboards and ride the waves and, and have a good time in the process. So I think it's it's nice to see our staffs rallying behind what's important, and that's our students. I think that's a great way to end. I love that mm -hmm. analogy there, mm -hmm. riding the wave. I like that. <laughs> so thank you guys very much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Jim. And we thank you for joining us today on this segment of School Matters because school matters. For TV Hamilton, I'm Joni Kopis. We'll see you next time.